<laughs> What's good? How y'all doing this evening? Oh man. Uh Chris Draft already got me cracking up before the show even started. But hey. Uh oh, welcome no. back to the Forever I Love Atlanta Sports Podcast. Uh two hometown guys talking hometown sports. It's your boy the Dunn. Um back with my partner in crime, Rick Flex. What's good, man? Hey, another day in Atlanta. Another day in Atlanta sports, my man. Hey man, hey, at least one team won today, another team, you know, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah, tough split. Yeah. And we got our uh star of the show, Mr. Former Falcon, linebacker Chris Draft. What's what's good, man? What's happening? All right. Uh man, we just trying to stay in there, man. We just trying to stay in balance, man. We over two right now. But we're gonna talk more about that here in a little bit. We also brought back on a special person, uh Keenan Forney. Right now he's taking care of some business. He has some wardrobe malf- malfunctioning. He getting that taken care yeah, of. Yeah. So he he told me off the record that his shirt was not tight enough. So he went to go get a tight, tight shirt so that he could come on and show off all his muscles. <laughs> now he he might have heard me say that or he might not, but you know, sometimes. Wow. Mm. All right. Ah, there All right, he is. Keenan. Uh, introduce yourself yeah. to everybody. What's up, y'all? This is Keenan Forney, Atlanta Falcons legend. Uh, 2001 draft class with the number one overall and the first African American quarterback chosen number one. Uh, Mike Vick uh, played seven years here. Former All Pro, uh, number 54 on the top 100 Atlanta Falcons of all time, and a bunch of other ish. But I'm here with CD and Fila, and I'm so happy that you guys asked me to join y'all. How y'all doing, fellas? We doing good, man. Thank you for the long intro, man. We appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, y'all already know what to do. If y'all new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that like button. Share this content out with other Atlanta sports fanatics. Hit us up in the comment section. As always, come holler at your hometown sports podcast. Woo! All right. Let's go ahead and get into the show um, real quick. The dream. Not a dream. That season is over. Team went 7 and 15, so they got a long offseason ahead right now. Um, Empire, their schedule will be released sometime next week. So be on the lookout for that. Georgia Swarm. Um, the lacrosse team, the NNL draft with this past Thursday. So this is how the draft looked it for us. Um, in the first round, we had four first-round picks. We had Robert Hudson out of Vermont, Jeff Hendrick out of Ohio State, Ethan Walker out of Denver University, and we also drafted Lane Herska out of Saskatchewan. That's in Canada, you guys, in case y'all don't know y'all geography. We got that. <laughs> All right. Uh, oh. Round three, we took uh, Sam Fifth out of Orangeville. And round four, uh, we took Tanner Buck from Toronto. Round fifth, we took Miles Silva from Army. And then round six, we took Reese Eddy from Boston University. Um, college news. Uh, Georgia Southern game um, against Florida Atlantic University was canceled due to COVID-19. Um, pretty mm-hmm. much a third of the players from uh, Florida Atlantic, they was affected by the virus. Mm-hmm. So Damn. they didn't get a chance to play. Yeah, it's messed up, man. These kids, man. You know, yeah. Um, yesterday, Tech, yeah, they took a huge L against UCL, forty nine to twenty one. Hopefully, Collins can get these boys back on track next week. Georgia State, I was in the house yesterday at Turner Field, Center Park, whatever state you want to call it now, but I was there, uh, watching the Georgia State Panthers take an L to University of Louisiana, Lafayette. They went into the overtime, thirty four thirty one. That was a tough loss yesterday. Um, Rick, what the Braves do? Yeah, so the Braves had a a, a decent week. Uh, yeah, lost two out of three from the Orioles. Uh, kind of bottom dwellers having a decent season though. So Monday we lost fourteen to one. That was a you know a Debbie Downer. Bounced back with a five to one win. Uh, that was good to see. But uh, we ended up losing the series on Wednesday five to one against them. We then went over to the Mets. We went to, to New York. We've done some damage. Uh, ended up taking two out of three for them. Uh, a nice 15 to two slug fest. Uh, again, that offense is just overpowering. Um, yesterday, tough loss. Um, you know, seven to two. The uh, bullpen kind of started giving that away. 
But we bounced back today uh, with a nice 7-0 victory. Cal Wright had a strong outing, six innings, um, six Ks with uh, one walk. So good to see him turn the corner, trying to get heated up for the playoffs. As we know, um, there's only seven games left in the season. So uh, a big series in Atlanta with the Marlins. Uh, we'll start off tomorrow. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of – but uh, let's go ahead and get to the report. All right. And Atlanta United. Um, they played a match yesterday against uh, Inter Miami. We lost that match two to one. Currently, right now, the team is ranked twelfth in the Eastern Conf- uh, for Conference. We only got two matches left, guys. We're not making the playoffs. I'm just first time in Atlanta United history. We're just not gonna make it. So we got a long golf season ahead. The main thing, man, we need to get a coach. Yep. So to address the white elephant in the room, not just the white elephant, but the black, red, and white elephant in the room. The Falcons. Today, I thought he was calling you an elephant, Keenan. It's not cool. Nah, here you go. Here you go. <laughs> there y'all go try to Jones. Hey, can, can, I say, can I say something oh, before man. we you get to, to the fight, Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I'm let y'all have, before, go ahead. before we get to that white elephant, that thing that we're saying in the room, but, but, can I can I just acknowledge? I know you, when you went over all those ske- you know, those the scores and everything, it it, it seemed bad. All right, because it said. <laughs> Not a whole bunch of good happening for Atlanta sports based on all those things. But I- I've got to say that the ability to play right now is a victory, right? Mm-hmm. You, 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 you said Florida, you know, Florida internationally they had a bunch of COVID cases. They had to cancel it. So the ability to play without having issue is a win. The ability to play where people get a chance to watch them, that is a win. The ability to push forward and, and, and send a message to our city in our country that if we want to do things that we have to have certain protocols and we have to be adjustable uh so it's a win even when the braves even get out on 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 the field now i'm not 14 to 1 is a loss yes you know 7 to 2 is a loss but at the same time even being able to play these games right now that's what that's a win that's an absolute win mls the same way again unfortunately the united where they are their positioning but the ability to play games right now and and do it in a way where people are safe, uh, I mean, it, 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 it's a win. You know what? I, I, I'm a you know what? I'm a person that look at things half glass full, but Chris, you look at things three fourths half full. <laughs> so I get what you said. That's that's great, man. Like for real, because it you you right. You know, for people to even go out there and put their their life their lives on the line, you don't even know they might catch it. You know. We had players get, caught it, you know, a few months ago and stuff. So, look at the uh, yeah. Florida Atlantic right now, you know, especially the college campus. Pretty sure those are hot spots right now. Yeah, Florida State's head coach caught it too. Uh, what's his name? Mike Norvell. They said, I saw that yesterday. He caught it, so he's quarantined. So, yeah, Chris is right, man. A lot of these uh, these kids are in, these coaches, they're putting their they – putting they're putting their nuts on the line. You know what I'm saying? It's uh, – uh. It's it's some it's some shit that I've never seen before, you know, because I don't think that I don't think I don't know what I would have done, knowing that I prepared for a whole off season to get ready for a season, and for some of these kids, you know, it's their last shot to try and get to the next level, or for high school kids to try and put some good tape out there so they can get them an offer somewhere. It's uh it's really crazy. I real I really feel bad for a lot of these kids and you know some of these coaches too. You know it's uh it's definitely crazy. But you're right, man. Well, you and and, and Keenan again. I know we're about to talk about the Falcons, but I'm just trying to give a little bit of perspective as we even go into this into that mm-hmm. game. And it, and it's just the idea that we talk about in football all the time. To it, it can be your last day. Today could be your last day. <laughs> and, and and then you know when you're playing. When it is your last day, they get that FedEx and take your stuff and it's gone. But the idea that it can be your last day, uh, mm-hmm. what COVID is doing is just kind of showing us that it could be anything that could make it our last day. It could be, you know, you know. so it's so critically important. It, hopefully for young people as they're training right now, that they, they, they kind of grab a hold of that it was always, there was always an ability for it to be over with one play, right? Mm-hmm. So... Right now, it's, it's that much more important that when you walk off that field, did you give everything you have? But then even before you get on there, are you preparing in the best way possible? And that's, again, what I hope is 
I'm not saying it's just a win if we got people that are getting COVID, but the win is in making sure that we are adjusting to it, that we're fighting for it. We're looking for a protocol that makes it where it's safer to get done, right? Not just going out randomly, you know, not just going out on the field and just saying we're going to play ball, but recognizing that we have got to make adjustments, real adjustments to make sure that the people are safe so they can go out and compete. Mm, yep, you're absolutely right. Absolutely right. It's one of the things I, uh, you know, I'm getting ready to go speak to a high school team tomorrow. And one of the things that that I'm going to preach on them and I'm, I don't plan on talking no 20, 30 minutes with them, but I'm going to give them a good five minutes right after practice. And, you know, it's a mantra that I've always lived by, is, you know, doing more than what's required. And I was taught that by June Jones and it just made a lot of sense for me back then because, you know, I'd come off of an injury and didn't know what the future held for me, you know? So for these kids and with COVID, you, you never know what's around the corner, you know? So you mm-hmm. might as well give your best and give your all exhaust all measures just to, you know what I mean? Because you never know when it could be your last time stepping out there. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and just, you know, Keenan, you're going to talk to a team. I mean, right now they're playing, but, you know, next week they could say the season is canceled. Like they really right. could. All right? right. So today, what did you give? Yo, tomorrow, are you prepared to give everything you have? If you're going to this game, could this be your last game? Absolutely. That is not just a cliche. You know, the cliches, they say things that are overused statements. But in this game, this violent, nasty, you know, even if there wasn't COVID, it is violent and nasty. There's a big guy like Keenan that's trying to put his hands on you and throw you in the ground and all that. Like, that's what this game is. So yes, sir. channeling that that says that, Every game matters. There's a lot of uncertainty in the game anyway, making sure you put your stamp on each day. Stamp it, right? And Mm -hmm. and, and I kind of want to ask you both the same question. I'll let you go, Keith. But do you think the mindset of a player from maybe say in his rookie season to more of a veteran leader of a team, is that quality of how amped up you get maybe in these situations we're going through right now, do you think that changes from a, a veteran to maybe just say a rookie coming into the league? Well, as a rookie coming into the league, you're trying to just – it's like they – it's like it's like you're a two-year-old baby and they grab you and they're tossing you in a swimming pool. You know, hey, you're just trying to stay afloat. You're trying to absorb all the information they give you. You're trying to, you're trying to handle all the off-the-field stuff new that's coming on you because your whole status has changed. You might still think of yourself as just that same regular college kid, but no, nah, you got a whole different animal that you're dealing with playing with the NFL, and it – and it's even amplified more with the city that you play in, you know, because it's going to be different from a kid playing for the Giants or for the Falcons as opposed to somebody playing for the Packers or Buffalo where it ain't, you know, where it's a little bit more small town colleges. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But as a rookie, you're just trying to swim and stay afloat and also get out on the field and produce and play well. And you're playing a lot more games than you've ever been used to playing. And so it's one of the things where you get used to that, it's a marathon. It ain't a sprint. Right. And so after your first year, you get a, a better view of what life in the league is like. And that offseason or during the season there, you learn how to handle all that and you know what to look forward to and how to prepare yourself going forward. Like, for example, like my first year, like in college, I was always used to staying up to 12, 11, 12 o'clock at night and then getting up and going practicing and doing my thing. Right. Uh, during the NFL, you got 16 some odd games. If you go to the playoffs, it could be another four. You playing a long season. So after my first year, I learned <laughs> during the season, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I'm at the house and I'm in the bed at 930 trying to catch up on my sleep, trying to, you know, recover as much as I can so I can put my best foot forward on Sundays, you know, because it's another thing you'll learn, too, is that every bit of tape you put out there is going around the league, you know, and you don't want to look like no sucker to somebody who you're going to be playing against down the road because if they see one little cheek in your armor, best believe they're going to come at you. And that, you not, know? Only, not only that, though, y'all, you know, college is different from pro, and I tell people this all the time. College, you know, you playing, you know, if you play, you know, you played in the WAC, all right, in Hawaii. Like, you playing teams like, okay, Oregon State, or, you know, um, what's Idaho State in that in that in that uh, conference, 
No, we used to play against like San Diego State, yeah. Brigham Young, uh, TCU, UTEP, Fresno State, San Jose State. Uh, we played some pretty good competition. Yeah, it wasn't as big time as draft in the Pac-10 where they had SC and mm-hmm. Washington and Washington States and Oregon's of the world. But you know, we still play some good competition. Exactly. And yeah. When you get in the NFL, you know, you playing against grown men. <laughs> so every week, every yeah. week. Yeah, I mean, the, from the ones, from the ones and the twos. You know, the ones are the, are the, are, are the, are the ballers, and the twos. Hey, you might get somebody in. It ain't that much of a drop off from him. I mean, because they're their top players from college. I mean, that, you know, that's what you wanted. You wanted to be around greatness, and so to go to the pros is to be around greatness. So, you know, the biggest difference when you look at uh, college is that, you know, college based on the the nature of having a scholarship that you know you can be there for a while. It doesn't mean that you know you're going to play ball because you can always get hurt, but you know you're going to be there for a while uh, if you get there. Now, you know, unless you're doing just something completely stupid and get thrown out uh, of school or something. But in NFL, there is nothing guaranteeing that you're that you're going to be there, right? right. Like you can, you, you know, you there, you playing ball. I got my stuff on. I'm good. I feel good. And next thing you know, bam, you're gone. And yeah. so I think that's the you know the, the thing that the rookies it, it's hard to really that first part is absorbing. So probably one of the biggest things that hits a rookie is that in an offseason, you'll have almost up to 100 people that are around in the offseason. Everybody working out. They got their other rookies, and they're all chilling. They're having a good time. You're a bunch of laughing, mm. joking, and everything. <laughs> and then that that final cut down when you get to 53, and then you have some, you know, your your practice squad guys, and all of a sudden there's like 60 guys in, in the room, and you're like, where did everybody else go? <laughs> mm, right. All right. The went home. Right. And so once you absorb, you know, kind of uh, absorb, absorb that, then you realize, it, you know, it reminds you that there's, you know, this opportunity can be over very quickly. So when you're talking about what is this mindset difference between being a rookie is that the rookie might not realize that just because you're in the league doesn't mean you have to stay in the league. Mm. Uh, the vet knows they got to fight to stay and to lose one year when you feel good. Like you had that all season kingdom where you was over there hitting it, like you strong, you got this, and you're like, man, I'm about to put this fire on people in this season. And so to lose that that season when you know that every year is a grind, every year is difficult. As Keenan said, it is a marathon. So every you know you have to earn the right every year to be able to play. And yes, so sir. to lose one year when you are in shape mm. uh, can be can be hard. Right. But at the same time, that's what this game is, is that you can be in shape and be hurt. And that's why we just have to be able to adjust. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Good stuff. Yeah, appreciate you know, a lot of them, uh, you know, a lot of them rookies, you know, they, they'll come in and, you know, I guess they're, they, they've they been so used to getting away with certain things at their universities. Like maybe they don't want to practice that day or or maybe they show up late or whatever it is, and their coaches kind of handicap them by letting them get away with it. I've seen guys come in with that type of mentality, and, you know, they be thinking it's sweet till it ain't, and next thing you know, next, next, next thing you know, Keenan getting that check, because if they don't want it, I'll take it. Right? <laughs> Let's say I can't make you go to work, brother, but, hey, yeah. I, hey I'll take that money. Mm-hmm. You know, what Brian McKnight say, I'll take him. Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so, are we going to talk about some Falcons, man? Are we going we gonna to yeah. talk about yeah, these Burns? Yeah, we let y'all have y'all a little moment to talk, you know. We, we, had, we had to do it. I mean, just a little tangent. We had to talk a little bit oh. and, and, and get a little perspective as we before we go into this game. All right. We go. All right before, we, before we get into the game, I got 14 people in the chat right now. Um, just we'd like to say hi to him. What's good? What's good? Ultra Shadow ninety seven. What's good, man? He say he upset right now. We hey, look, man. We gonna break it down for you. Uh, Miss Barkley, how you doing? Z, uh, what's good, man? Mad Mike, Mad Mike Sports. What's good, man? The Travis. He said Chris Jeff was one of his favorite Falcons. So he, you know, he yeah, he's telling the truth that's too. My that's my guy. Good. That's my oh, homeboy. they love you out there. They love hey, you, Ralph. <laughs> All right. I appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Uh, RWBY freshman, he said, you need to play this game like you would not get another play today. Uh, prove that you never, ever, never, you ever rest when you are up to do what you need to do at the end of the game. So, yeah, that's true. Mm. Atlanta Falcons Nation, what's good? Matt Mike Sports, he said, draft was a good player. 
And then Z said, hit the like button to share. Yeah, y'all hit that like button to share this content out. So, um, now let's get into the game. Today, we went into Dallas. We was looking good mm. at halftime, but we let the game get away from us. Dallas came out and won 40-39. Uh, Matt Ryan went 24 for 36, threw for 273 yards, four touchdowns. Gage got 46 yards, one touchdown. Ridley, hey, he's um he then turned into Matt Ryan's favorite red zone weapon. It's a, he got 109 receiving yards, two touchdowns. Hayden Hurst, way much improvement this game. 72 yards, got a touchdown. And um Fowler and um Fowler and Deion Jones they split the sack today. And the defense had three turnovers. Now, we lost McGarry and McKinley. Um, both was injured. McGarry is like it's an MCL. We don't know how serious it is. Hopefully he'll be fine. If he could just, you know, miss what two two months, that'd be fine. Or probably less than that. But I don't want him out the whole season, man, because we need him, man. We really do. Um, it looked like McKinley was messed up his groin, so he could be out the worst, what, two or three weeks. Man, the way he landed, it looked like he felt a pop in that thing. I've had that happen, and I saw how he was walking and grabbing, man. He might be out for a while. You talking about uh, McKinley? Yes, sir. Good like, because first he's got to get rid of that pain that's happening right now, and then, then he got to get that strength back in there. So he might be he might be out for a second, man. Probably the end of the month. I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, yeah, I feel you, man. The Travis said, Chris Drell, he said, please tell Falcons fans that defense win you games. Uh, hey, Falcons fans, <laughs> defense wins you games. Uh, <laughs> I don't. Hey, we 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 we're, we're gonna get into it and, and break it down some more. I I, I think when you you see a guy like Tack, he's got a growing. Uh, I think you're gonna see you see some. Uh, hamstrings uh, a little bit this week too is that people aren't in great shape mm. uh, so that first game they were able to get through it but then you're seeing a little bit of those nicks this week uh but i i know you had to just give the the, the highlights but man, brother i was excited about those linebackers flying around at the beginning of the game yeah right mm. so i know you just and then uh, grady jared he was channeling his Aaron Donald. Like, I know he watched the tape of Aaron Donald whooping Dallas's just a tail last week, and he was channeling that. So you see that that sack and a half, like he was giving them the business. So, you know, we if we want to talk about a game, I think you know what's always important is the coach comes in afterwards and he says, all right, we lost, but it doesn't mean it's all bad, right? And just like if you won, it's not all good, right? And so what's important hmm. is as we talk about this game, and Keita's going to give you some great insight and talking about the line and all these other things and just this, this game is that we've got to be able, as much as we're a little bit mad, you know, to be able, we got to be able to give props for the good that happens, all right? We've got to be able to do that and then be able to talk about this bad because the, the obvious thing is that you don't win a game unless you finish with more points than the other team, Right. So if, if if anybody wants to know what, what do I think, not just the defense wins championships, it, it, or not just the defense wins the games, but having a score that's more than the other team is what wins. All right, so that's what we're looking for. We gotta finish, 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 <laughs> finish, finish, finish the damn game. All right, so yeah, just just giving all that. So you're gonna hear a lot of energy because again, I was fired up. I'm, I was watching those guys fly around at the beginning of the game, and I was jumping up, and I was thinking, "Whoo, man, maybe." Absolutely no, I can't do it. But they look good <laughs> in, in running around. So we're gonna have a temper to temper approach in terms of that because we're gonna give you that that coach's perspective. And the coach's perspective says, I can't say it's all bad. I can't say it's all good. We just have to look at it for what it is, like it's Monday after a game, and just be honest about it because that's the only way you get better. Yeah. All right, Keenan, what's your take on the game, man? I'm on the same boat as Draft. I completely agree with you. Um, I saw a lot of good things out there today. Um, I saw us. Um, we didn't go out and make a lot of the same mistakes we did last week. And to me, that shows growth. You know, of course, we didn't win the game. We didn't finish, which is what you're supposed to do. But I saw a lot of good things to build on. And again, it's just the first two games of the season. Let's be honest. These guys didn't play. They didn't have no OTA, didn't have any mini camp, barely had a training camp, 
And during those times is when you build that chemistry. That's when you build that chemistry on the field. That's when you build it off the field because a lot of times people don't know off the field, you know, guys are going and hanging out with each other, you know, getting to learn each other a little bit, you know, learning your your weaknesses, your strengths, you know, uh, you're learning your communication skills on the field. And when you go to training camp, you're just practicing what you've been going over in OTAs and minicamp for the past few months, you know, and most of the time they've been in it since about May, they didn't all get together until about what was uh, late July yeah, and yeah. mid July and draft, you know, as well as I do, I was just talking to another friend. There is a difference in speed from, from <laughs> practice speed to training camp speed to preseason speed. You kind of picking it up a little bit more and then regular season, bam, that thing is at a hundred. Yeah. And yeah. that's probably why you see a lot of injuries going on right now. You asking a lot of guys to go, you, you asking these sports cards to go from zero to hundred and they've been at idle for months now, you know, you can't do that. But I would just say, man, don't panic. Don't jump off the boat. They're on to in 2002. We started on to, we lost a tough game to green Bay up there, lost another one at home to Chicago. And we had really good veterans in the locker room, like Chris and uh, Sean Jefferson and Bob Whitfield. And, you know, um, who else did we have? Um, uh, to Bob Christian, we had a bunch of really good vets in that locker room. I can still remember after Ed the uh, yeah, Ed Jasper yeah. Fish. Yeah. We had a lot Fish. of really good hungry veterans, you know. And I just remember Sean Jefferson in the locker room. As soon as we walked out the field, thinking that we did everything that we could to win that game, Sean Jefferson before the coach even talked, just slapping his hand, talking about, "Hey, we are right there, y'all. Just hold on tight. Keep coming to practice. Keep showing up for work, you know." Still be hungry in the meat room. Still be hungry at practice. We are that close. We're not that far off. And then the next week, we went out and played, I think it was Cincinnati, and we went on a run. So hopefully, well, not hopefully, I know that they got that veteran leadership in that locker room. A bunch of those guys that are still around from that Super Bowl, hopefully they'll be that same way and get everybody on board and make sure guys are staying accountable, you know, because during this time, you got some guys now that can – start bullshitting, getting to where they come in on Monday, don't want to get your lift in, don't want to watch no extra tape on Tuesday or, or or be out in the streets Wednesday through Friday. No, go to sleep early, still take care of your body, still show up for film study, still show up at practice, still communicate, no finger pointing, which is going to be a little bit because let's be honest, they sitting around mm. in the locker room, everybody on that plane ride coming back from Dallas, they know who lost that game for them. You know what I mean? But I think it's going to be about having one of them good old come-to-Jesus moments, one of them team player only meeting, and instead of finger-pointing, because guys can get sensitive if you, hey, yo, y'all need this, that, and the third, they'll get sensitive and won't hear what you got to say. They got to have a real conversation. And, hey, it's always one position group on the field that is not as strong. And I've been in them rooms where the O-line, where we was the worst on the team, and everybody looking at us crazy, like, hey, y'all need to get y'all shit together. You know what I'm saying? Or looking at the, the D-line or whoever it is, like, hey, man, yo, they need to get their shit together. But if you do that, then you're pulling apart as opposed to coming together. But I'm talking a bunch. I'm sorry about that, y'all. No, you're good. You're good. You're good. No, um, you know, Keenan, you, 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 you're saying it right on, man. And that's what, that's what I'm saying. That, that's what's critical in being able to look at this game and recognize that we see what Matt Ryan did. And it's not – you know, so all the fans and people out there, don't blame Matt. Don't don't look at Matt and try to get this easy. But well, we gonna just blame him when he has two hundred seventy three yards and four touchdowns. Come on, man. No, don't right. don't do that. All right. You know, we, we've got to be honest and look through that. Did we make enough plays to be able to win? That's what it comes down to: making plays at the right time to be able to win. And that's that's really when you start looking back at this game. Is you know they made some great plays earlier. And, and just weren't able to continue making those timely plays and, and, and get it done, right? And, and just, you know, just as a case in point in terms of, of coaching and really looking at those little details, I'm watching a, the onside kick. Now, what are most people saying when they see that onside kick and the Falcons stood around? What, what's the first thing they think? What the heck's wrong with them? How, what, 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 what's, what's wrong with them? What's wrong with them? And as me putting my coach's hat on, the first thing I'm thinking is, have they were they ever in that situation in practice? Oh, have they taught? Yes. How they had they talk? Because I'm gonna tell you something. I remember that, like the live reaction. I'm like, why are they why are they looking around like they playing dice, like they shooting dice? 
You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You shoot dice in the bathroom. You just stand up, wait for the uh, dice to let, just land. Yeah, but looking back so, at it, yeah. you know, I had to. I, I got, to I got twenty that he hit this point. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what, what I'm saying is, it, it's about situational football. So we have to be able to maximize and make our plays, and part of that is putting ourselves in those situations in practice. So if you look at that, when you talk about onside kick, what are the coaching points? The coaching points are the ball has to go ten yards, and the other team can't touch the ball until it goes ten yards. That the ball can come at you real fast, and you got to be able to get the ball. If it's real, if it's too fast, let it go. But then they talk about the slow ball that barely gets to you. What do you do with that? Right. And so that's what, again, when we talk about going back and watching the film, it's, you know, what are the things that we need to work on specifically? You know, where are those little details that are going to be the difference in winning the game? Right. Mm -hmm. You know, where's that situation football that we need to be able to get to? Where is it where we understand that this is the play that's going to win the game? All right. You know, I don't want to throw Julio under the bus, but I got to, you know, I just got to say it is this is the play that's going to win the game. You've got to catch this ball. This yep. is when we make we we do a little bit of trickery and Gage gets that ball out there. That's the ball that you have to catch. You know, that's where we we separate understanding that these teams, the NFL teams, they're so close. Right. These games are going to come down the last two minutes. Pretty much all these games are going to come down to it. If you watch, I mean, there were some great games this week. And they're all right down. So it's only going to be a couple of plays. Mm. And so the key yes, is going back and say, what are those couple of plays that they won? And where are those ones, though, where we had the ability to win it, but we just didn't make the play? Mm -hmm. All right, Mr. Draft, this is why I want to ask you real quick, because we talk about our defense, and we know our defense haven't been good for a while. But what was the identity when Wade Phillips and Dan, Dan Reeves when they were coaching back then, because we knew we had a great defense back then. Great defense. So with, with Wade, we had a 3-4 three, four, three, four defense. And one of the things that was great with, with Wade was when we had with Dan and Wade, uh, Dan was the offensive coordinator. And so until we got Wade, so I had a couple of years where we didn't have Wade, uh, Dan might be a little bit biased <laughs> or a whole bunch biased towards the offense. And – <laughs> and it always felt you know, like we, we were doing highlights or something after a game that it was like there was this nice little slight to the D because, you know, coach was the offensive guy. And so one of the great things with having Wade, uh, I mean, just he's just an awesome guy. I mean, every time after when, when I wasn't with the Falcons and he was coaching for another team, the first person after the game, the guy that comes up and taps you on the shoulder, it would be Wade Phillips. You know, so when you hear these things about – a coach that cares, like, oh, we, you know, I really care about you. A lot of times that's some bull. I mean, let's just keep it real. A lot of times it's kind of some bull, right? right? But Wade is a guy that really you absolutely know that he does care. And I think uh, when you look at our team, it was about putting guys that can play in the right positions to get after the ball. And, you know, for the most part, that's what we did. I mean, you know, again, that's you know, that's what you want with the defense. When, when the Falcons are rolling, you see guys working together. I mean, you can see flashes of – what's possible at the beginning of that game. I mean, it was like an assault on yeah. the, the Cowboys at the beginning of the game. And so the key is, can you can you kind of do that, come after them, and recognize that they're going to take that punch and they're going to make adjustments, mm. right? And so can you now adjust back with them knowing that we're in a chess match? And so if you're asking, well, what, what did we do well was with, with, with Wade – we did a great job of continuing to adjust, and that's what great teams do. They put pressure on you, pressure on you, pressure on you, and when that other team makes adjustments, that's when you still you have to be able to make adjustments again. So it's not that you're just going to completely beat their beat their tail. Like we're just not going to overmatch somebody so much like that in the, in the NFL. You're going to beat them, and then you're going to have to make it. They're going to make adjustments. You come back and get them again, and it's constant all the way to the end of the game. Mm. You yes, know, sir. I, I just, you know, like I said, man, and even the Travis, he's saying he loved that old two defense. He said, and y'all was great individually, but collectively, y'all was a beast. And that's, and that's the thing, man. I remember when y'all went up there at Green Bay in the playoff game, and y'all you know, gave Brett Favre hell. <laughs> well, and again, think of this. It's, it's still a balance. So, you know, I can't say it just in terms of defense. I got to talk about how. You know, with the guys with Keenan and our offense, we had a great balance. So offense is putting pressure on them. We're putting pressure on defense. And then special teams, we had some guys that went after it. So it's just, 
this combination of guys that when you when you have that great balance, I mean that's where you win. You know, we're we're able to make plays, and again, just like this week, you make te- you know, turnovers, and then the offense capitalizes on it. You just continue to put pressure on both sides of the ball, and then with special teams. So I think more than anything, we had a, a great group of guys on defense that were you know warriors that were getting after it. But it was a great complement to the st- what was happening over on the offense and with the special teams. Yeah, it was great complimentary football, man, because offensively we came out and then defensively y'all shut them out and then Artie and Swimming Hole, they blocked the punt, recovered it. It just, you know, all three phases of the uh, all three phases of our football team was just on that night. And that's what you need. That's what this team needs. You know, like today I was watching that game and it looked like, you know, when we got those first couple fumbles, you know, I was like, okay, look like they went out and practiced this week and practiced that peanut Tillman punch. And offense worked on, hey, when we get the ball back, we got to score fast. And, you know, uh, we went back out there that second half, and it's like you said, Dallas, they made some adjustments, and we mm-hmm. just didn't. And offense kind of stalled a little bit, which happens, and we just got to finish better. And that's where you got to pick each other up, too. I mean, it's like if offense yeah. stalls a little bit, that's what defense is. You can't be at the same time, right? Like you can't just be all in. So that first half, bam, everybody's on it, on it, on it. And mm. then you get a little bit of a sputter. That's where we got to step up. So it's that nice little balance and being complimentary of each other that's critical. And then, again, doing whatever it takes to win and then recognizing that the other team is getting paid. I think we always talk about it that way. The sure. other team's job, they, they want to win, win, too. They want to win, too, right? exactly. Yeah, so they're not, they not like, oh, damn, man, they, they gave it to us in the first half. Oh, man. Like, they, there's no way they're giving up, right? They're going back in there. They're getting on the whiteboard. They're, you know, they're looking at the surface, the Microsoft surfaces, all that stuff, and they're, they're making adjustments, you know. But the reality is in this game, we're making adjustments constantly. So we've got to be able to do that and know that there are some – all those guys are paid over. They're, they're all professionals. So they're not going to give up. They're going to fight to the end. And are we willing to make the adjustments that we need to make sure we can finish at the end and get it done? Right? Yeah, buddy. You got to win your one-on-one matchups out there, too. That's what the league is about, man. It's a lot of times I remember being in a meeting room and coach will sit up and say, hey, look here, we can't give you no help. You got to go out there and win. You got to win versus their guy. And a lot of times that guy might get more, more money than you, which means he's probably a better person at his position than where you are at your position. But – Hey, we all out there on the same field, and, hey, put up a shut-up. You know, we was talking about Julio dropping that ball out there, man. Yo, that right there is a nail in the coffin that we got to have. He got to make that play. Now, he came back a little while later and made that great catch to keep the drive going, but that one right there, man, that one kind of hurt. But also, too, uh, I don't want, I'm not going to sit up and dump on Julio. You know, he made a mistake. He made up for it. Uh, Coaches got to make a couple better calls. That two point conversion, yeah, we should have kicked the field goal probably. You know, hindsight is twenty twenty. It is what it is. And also, too, uh, what was I thinking? Uh, no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah. So I, I said what you're saying, Keenan, is, is right on. So we, you know, again, we have to look at the whole thing. That's why it's not dumping on somebody, but just knowing that at the end of the day, it's going to be making plays. You, you talked about making you know these one-on-one plays, making plays. Each individual has to make more plays than the other team. And so when we go back and look at that, that's that that key component of doing it together, complementing each other again. Offense a little bit off. Defense got to stand up and make those plays. And and again, and then ride that wave knowing that the other team is they coming back, man. <laughs> They got a lot of pride, man. They, you know, they down in the star. They just lost the close game to the Rams. They, they, you know, they, they in that big, beautiful stadium, and they are getting taken out behind the woodshed in that first quarter, man. Not out behind the woodshed. It's, the woodshed. <laughs> it's not even that whooping that you're gonna get in the store. It's that whooping that you get when they go outside and they go up and hide out because it's behind <laughs> because the whole whooping is so bad. I, I mean, that's how they was getting beat. Right, oh, so, man. they're like, no, man, we we can't go out like this. So again, it's just recognizing that and knowing there's a lot of pride on those fields, so they coming back, right? Yeah, you speak about pride. You know, I know I was uh, getting on the Julio about his catch, but Julio had a lot of pride because you could tell his hamstring was still hurting him 
yeah. from last week because he was questionable all this past week. And you can see him wincing out there. He came out there and still finished it for us. So we got some good veteran leadership in that locker room. It's just, man, they got to hold tight, man, hold together and, you know, continue working this week on getting better so they can get that dub, you know, because like you said earlier, man, it's hard to win a National Football League. It's not like it's college where it's Florida State versus, you know, some uh, some some BS school, you know what I'm saying? BSD Division Two, Division Three school where it's going to be 63 to nothing and now we get our twos in the second half. No, it's that close every week. Mm-hmm. But look, I'm just going to say it like this here, man. And I don't know if y'all going to agree with me or not. But we here at Fila Sports, and we also under the umbrella of Georgia Sports House of Talent and Media. Uh, we're an uh, upcoming media, sports media group in the state of Georgia. We're trying to get credentials to all the sports teams in the, in the state. But we've done our homework. And this defense, man, I'm just going to be honest with you, it has not been good. We hired Dan Quinn to fix the defense after we fired Mike Smith. I was never a fan of Dan Quinn. And I'm not trying to – this show is not to bash Dan Quinn at all. (laughs) But I never was a fan of Dan Quinn. Um, Back in 2015 when we hired him, I wanted Rex Ryan or I wanted a guy like um, Todd Bowles, the defensive coordinator out there right now with the Buccaneers. Um. It just, to me, yeah, we went to the Super Bowl, almost won it. But if you look at 2015, 16, 17, 18, 19, and even we going into the new year, we always start the season out real slow. And by middle of the season, it's like that light switch want to start clicking in and, oh, we need to do this now. We seen it last year. When Dan Quinn gave up the uh, coaching, the defensive coaching responsibility to uh, Raheem Morris and uh, Jeff Ulrich, in which they did a good job that second half, but we can't continue to be coming out like this the first half of the season. Like I, I I'm just being real. Last year I wanted him gone, and I wanted us to hire a guy like Don Martindale, the defensive coordinator for the Baltimore Ravens. Great person, knows defense. Um, look how the Baltimore Ravens have been playing the past few years under this man. That's the type of identity we need for the Falcons because offense is not the problem. Matt Ryan, Julio Jones, you got a Calvin Ridley. We now we got new pieces on the offensive line to protect Matt Ryan and to open up holes for our running backs. Offense is not a problem. The defense is the problem, and it's not. And it's not the players. Players can't escape, escape bad coaching. Am I am I lying? Well, we have old saying, you know, uh, coaches coach and players play. So, I mean, I'm not going to put it all on the coaching staff. I'm going to give it to both both of them. You know, coaches can do a better job of putting us in better positions. And I'll give you an example. Down on the goal line where Kazee got that truck stick by Zeke on the two-yard line. Why do we have Kazee, you know what I'm saying, filling right there one-on-one with Zeke? Zeke is a $50 million back. They pay him to make those types of plays, you know, but – I mean, if you look at what the formation was, I think they was in trips and they moved a bunch of people out of the box mm-hmm. and they schemed them up right, you know? So that was good call on their behalf. And also, too, you know, the players, you know, sometimes the players, no matter what the coach and them call, you got to be like, man, F it. We're going to make it work. We got to win. We got to win this down. Whether you're on defense, we got to get off the field, or on offense, we got to convert, or we got to score on this drive to keep it, you know, a three-score lead, you know? There's been some tweets and some, you know, some uh, shout outs out there of like how the players are feeling. So like coming from you guys, from what I watched, the the, the team is still bought in to what Dan Quinn is, is spilling. Um, they're still fighting. Um, do you sense the same thing that they're still on the same page? They're still getting, I mean, like you said, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's what, I mean, that's what it looks like. I, I, I you know, let me, let me just go back to that to, you know, 2015, Matt Ryan is the MVP of the league. Let's, let's not, Let's not forget that. I mean, he's, mm. he's MVP when they go to the, the Super Bowl, right? He had an amazing season, all right? One of the best seasons in NFL history. So what, what I want you – the biggest thing I want you guys to look at is balance, right? I talked about that with Keenan and what we had in 2002. We have Warwick Dunn and, and T.J. Duckett back there running the ball with Mike complimenting him and, you know, offensive line making this thing work is that they haven't ran the ball effective enough. 
You know, so Dante Freeman got he got paid, all right? Yeah. He got paid and then he got hurt. Yeah. Right? You had this you had this one two punch of, of Tevin Coleman with Don, you know, Devontae. I mean, that was that was a huge right. That's what they're trying to grab right now with, with Todd and trying to make that thing work. So the key is it's as great as Matt Ryan throwing the ball, the real key to success is going to be running the ball well, exactly. being able to control right. the clock and make it where the defense is not on the field as much. Right. The other part is that when you see these last couple of years, a lot of these defensive guys got hurt. Right. I mean, you, you need your leaders on the you, leaders on the field. I mean, you, you can't when you get hurt up the middle. These are your guys, your safety, Neil, you know, you, 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 like you they're the guys, the guys got hurt. So that's definitely a conditioning type of issue. But when you're star players, these leaders of your defense, you're going to struggle a little bit. So when we look at, well, what is it going to take to really be able to win and then get even going back even to last year? One of the things is. Dan Quinn needs to be a head coach. He doesn't need to be a defensive coordinator. Facts, and, that, facts. and that's why when he went back to being a head coach, he was able to manage the energy of the team. Because that's what a head coach has to do. Mm. Being a defensive coordinator, he could not do that. So he needed to be able to not be biased towards defense or offense, but go and get the team right. And you mm. saw that completely change, the whole energy of the team, because he can go jump in a, an offensive huddle and, and get them right. Because he's not the defensive coordinator. Otherwise, he got to spend too much time over there, right? And that he he knew that was wrong, but he just bought into it, right? But when it was time to actually go and win, he knew he had to be a head coach. So what I'm telling you right now, what, what you what you want is we need to get Todd going and find that that amount of of rushes that he can do and still be effective and strong, right? And then where is it the other guys fill in? Because recognize again when. The team was rolling. There was a nice balance between Devontae and Tevin. There was a balance, right? Mm -hmm. So where's that balance in terms of running as running backs? And then where's that balance in terms of running the ball so you're able to control the, the clock and being able to get that done? You know, defensively, got to stay healthy, right? Got to stay healthy, got to stay healthy. Unfortunately, Tack, you know, that, that growing, that's not something new. He's been nicked up consistently he's been nicked up. So they've got to do a better job of making sure they stay healthy, be honest about how they're feeling. Keenan, you said that Julio is a warrior. He's a warrior, but with, with warriors involved, we got to always have somebody that can pull somebody back. Right? Mm. If you're hurting so much that you're really thinking about that hamstring, well, you know what? We're better off you, you missing the game and getting healthy so we can have Julio rather mm. than having a, a gimpy, Julio that now a hamstring becomes something that the rest of the season is just always there. Right. right. So that's, those are some hard decisions that we have to get this, this, you know, moving forward. But that's what I'm saying is we got to be able to run the ball. They ran the ball a little bit better. They stay committed to that. That's what's going to help you control that line of scrimmage. You got to wear those boys down a little bit to be able to get going and then defensively get rested, get back on the field, make sure you're making your plays. Right. They got to tackle better. And what Keenan said, they got to be able to scheme a little bit better. When you know you got a guy like like uh, Zeke running through, you know they're trying to match him up with the DB. You know that. Exactly. So if you've got to do a, a substitution where now you have a couple of linebackers that are now in for this week because you know they're going to try to create this situation where Zeke on the safety, then you need a guy that's going to be able to come up in that hole. And, and Zeke, it's going to be hard. Like, dude is a beast. He got paid for that. All right? <laughs> but – you're going to be a lot better off having a linebacker That's run right. up in that hole rather than allowing that, you know, a safety to get one-on-one -on -one with, with Zeke. So those, again, when we're talking about adjustments, when you're getting in that game, are you willing to to see how they're attacking you and say, hey, we got to make this adjustment right now? My man, you're going in and you're going to play this spot, right? Because you know that's how they're attacking them. So I guess we got to run the ball better, Right be able to control it, got to do a better job of finding that balance so that you can run it so Todd will be the most effective possible. Julio needs to be honest about how his body feels this week. If he needs to sit out for a week so he can be better, do that so that we can have the superstar Julio the Jet where he's not worried about his hamstring. Defensively, got to be able to make some adjustments in, in, in terms of that, but they got to continue to be able to attack, make sure they take care of their bodies. And then, again, special teams – you know, they got to look and say, what are those situations that we haven't, that we didn't go over, that we need to now practice this week? So if something comes up during the next game, we're going to be ready for it.
So. You know what? Hey, I every wanna... every team in the NFL is practicing what just happened to the Cowboys. I mean, not Cowboys, but the Cowboys in the Atlanta game. Every team, the special teams coach is going to show that to uh, their units Friday morning before they go out to practice and Saturday morning before they go on the field for walkthrough. That play right there will be discussed, so it's not a problem going forward for anybody. And I think the Falcons will get that fixed. They better get that fixed. I mean, because I was unclear on the rule. I was sitting up thinking that maybe, you know, as the ball's kick, maybe one of the guys can go run and try and grab it. And if he doesn't get it and they got it, then it's still our ball because it didn't go 10 yards. But I guess that's not the rule. Am I right? That's The receiver team, they can, it, they, can, they, can, they can go after it. It's just the, the kicking but, team. They got to wait. They got to let it hit 10 yards for them to get it. But like, if we touch it, then it's fair game for them, it's, right? It's, a, it's a live, it's, it's a, a live, live ball. ball. So if you yeah. touch it, so you have to go and get it. And so that's what I'm saying is that because it was so slow, there there was the indecision of going and jumping on that ball, and that is that's a hard situation. But again, that's exactly what's going to happen. I mean, this is a copycat league, so people are going to be able to watch it. I mean, just so you can see how it's a copycat league, there was a, a throwback that they did to Hirsch early in the game. That yep. was a, a great, you know, a, a great call. Literally, that same call happened at the end of the game in the Kansas City San Diego game because they were watching it and they dialed it up. And you know, Kelsey ran it was he was close, but there was a little bit more pressure on Patrick Mahomes, so he wasn't able to do it. And so, again, that's the type of adjustments that we have to be able to make: is that you're watching other people. The NFL is watching constantly, and they're willing to make adjustments that even if it wasn't in their game plan. If they watch the game before them, they'll be willing to put that in. And so I guess, again, what I'm saying is, are we adjusting well enough? You know, do we see a hole and fix it right now rather than saying, let's go wait and watch the tape later? Forget that. We got to fix it now. Exactly. Yes, sir. And here's the thing, man, uh, Chris, uh, you brought up a great point about being balanced on offense because a lot of people, you know, like they say, they want to blame Matt Ryan. For everything, look at what the man did last week. Threw 54 times. 54, that's too much for a quarterback. All right? And the running, back, the running game, we only do it doing 19 carries. It has to be balanced. You have Todd Gurley now. We have, a, you know, well, they're not even activating Olsen, which they should. But you got Brian Hill. You have uh, Edo Smith. You have these guys that can run the rock. You know, you run the ball, you control the momentum of the game. You control the tone of the game. You you eat up clock. And I felt like we didn't really – we did enough in the third quarter, but it just, you know, we we I think we hit that panic button and we went back to our old selves, you know, in that week one game against Seattle. And lo and behold, that's what happened. So I'm glad you brought that up because some people just think that Matt Ryan got to throw for seven touchdowns, throw for 1,000 yards in the game. <laughs> And like, come on, that's impossible. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's hard. They're putting too much on him. So we we'll said it has to be a complimentary. I, I'll tell you this: he looks comfortable, though. You know, you know. So I, I'm I'm excited about the fact that these first two games, at least he look he looks comfortable. That you know, the, after that 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 Super Bowl year when when uh, Shannon had left, it, it looked like he wasn't as comfortable unless he got in two minute situations. Hurry up, where he was the one actually making the calls. But he looks good right now. So. Yeah. It, you know, and, and so when you look at those yards, I'm always going to look at the demeanor of a person. Uh, you know, how does he feel? How smooth it, you know, is he? And he looks smooth. So that's a great sign. You know, it's a great sign for the offense. Again, right now, they just got to find a way to not just run the ball, but run the ball effectively, run the ball with passion. And, and like I said, you know, you know they've got it. You know, when the running backs are running that ball, they got to come downhill and put some fire on the on the tacklers. That you, you didn't feel that enough. That's that next level of running the ball right now. It's not just getting some yards, but really falling forward and really punishing the the ball. You know, the the defenders that are trying to tackle. You know, and that's what you know. That's what Todd did a great job of in in, in L.A. until his knee really started bothering him. So that's what we we got to find that balance so that he can be nice and heavy and effective and violent <laughs> when he runs the ball. Man, that's how Zeke was running it on us today. He was falling forward, pushing the pile. I was just like, after a while, like, golly, either we're not strong enough or we playing a little soft today because Zeke seemed to be getting strong and he's falling forward for two, three. Yeah, yeah. I think Keenan had a, had a good point, though, earlier. I mean, a lot of these guys, you know, would be in the mindset, all right, preseason game, two, three over with. But now you're in the week three, like, you know, 
you can't work your kinks out like you normally would per se. I guess you guys would know better. Um, but you know, you got to go for it now. Um, and definitely missing, you know, so much time in, in mini camp and OTAs and, and not even having a preseason, you know, it's gotta be, like you said, the conditioning, um, obviously the hammies pulling, um, but just that competitive fire, you know, is, is gotta be enforced now. Cause you know, you don't have these preseason games just to work out your kinks and your schemes. Like uh, Chris said, you got to make these adjustments now because we're now in week three. We're live, you know, and I think that's a maybe a different mindset they're having to adjust to possibly. Well, I, I, don't, I don't think it's so much that it's it's different. It's just that it's what you have to do. I mean, yeah. it's 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 just real. Like, you have to make the adjustments. And that's what's saying. I can't have made that as yeah, Zeke was falling. I want, I want you guys, if you go back and watch the tape, you can see he was heavy. That's, that's part of what makes him great is he's a heavy runner. He almost always falls forward. Always falls forward. Because yeah, when he runs, right. he's putting all his weight behind it. Yes, he's a downhill runner, and he always falls forward. And then when you look back and now look at some of the runs that we had as the Falcons and, and and then just see the guys when they're tackling, how much is, are they taking those hits, right? Yeah. So that's the part where, again, we got to be able to attack those ball carriers, be able to put fire on them, you know, and then offensively put more pressure on the defense in that same type of way. But, again, making adjustments, being strong, and that's what, you know, that's where Keenan says, if all, you know, being able to stay together and taking care of your body throughout this season, it's early, you know, but continuing to work it. So you can still get strong, you know, you, you can still build mm-hmm. your strength during the season. Like, what you do in the offseason is huge. That creates a baseline. But a great player is still hitting those weights. It's still working that body. It's, it's still in that cold tub. It's still, you know, all those things are, consistent thing they have to do during the season and as people are getting hurt that's you know it's going to allow you to be stronger and stronger so yeah buddy so, hey so, I, I i will say this i'm sorry about that man but i wanted to get back on our offensive line man our offensive line looked good today like you was talking earlier chris about how matt just looked comfortable you know he was comfortable last week this week we only gave up one sack and that was I think Matt should have got rid of that a little bit early. It was kind of a play action, you know, because the right tackle was trying to aggressive set the guy, and Matt kind of held on to it a little late. But, you know, for the most part, he didn't have anybody hitting him late. He didn't might have had a couple people falling in front of him, but it wasn't nobody, like, hitting him after he's delivered the ball, which after a while to a quarterback, you don't feel like throwing that ball and then somebody falling and laying on you, you know, and after a while you might be kind of, ooh, where's that joke at? You know, you got to stand back there, what they say, with ice water in your veins. So, you know, I think the more that that happens for him, and it happened a lot this game, that's why he was so comfortable. You know, what we were, I think we won the, we were, we were plus in the turnover margin today. You know, we took a couple away, we had the one pick, but, Man, that that was a game that we should have won. I think that was like I'm not a math whiz, but we was probably ninety percent should have won that game because we had, you know, we took the ball away from them more than they did us. Yeah. All right. So here's my take. All right. We continue going on this road this season. Do y'all do y'all see Dan Quinn keeping his job here in, in Atlanta? <laughs> I, 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 it, it's, it's funny how you say that because it is uh, for me I'm, I'm going to put myself in it, as being kind of a teammate on that team when you're, I'm answering that question and that is to say do you think Dan Quinn would be there I believe the team can win you know did they, they played well they should have won this game and so the, the, the real question for me is more of are they going to do the adjustment that are needed for them to continue to get better and if they do that Dan will be here right now if they don't if they don't respond, they don't, you know, don't make the adjustments, then he won't. So it's not as easy as saying, do you think he'll be there? But it's really the fact that if he's not, it's because the team hasn't made the adjustments that's needed to be able to win, right? And my hope, if you're a Falcons fan, the hope is that that's what they're doing, is they're making adjustments, they're going back, looking at the tape, recognize what they did well, uh, what they need to improve on, and figuring out a way that just, you know, make those things come together and finish the games off. What about you, uh, Keenan? Uh, I believe it's still early to tell that, but the way that they've been playing, the way they uh, they made the their adjustments, and the way that they played harder and made less mistakes this week, mm-hmm. if they continue in that trend next week and go out and get them a nice win, you know, I think that they can get on a roll. But if they go out next week 
and have a bunch of setbacks, you know, getting penalties and uh, making bad mistakes that they made like the first game, then it's going to be, uh, I hate to say it, but, you know, I think they got the right coach in place to be positive with them because right now they don't need a coach that's going to be in there ah, 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 all in their shit when they're playing well and they're doing – they're playing as hard as they can. They play hard today, you know. It wasn't like they was out there being soft and not trying to not trying to play hard. They play hard today. It's just some – hey, it's one or two plays in the game that can get your ass whooped, and that's what happened. The one or two plays bit us. And – I think that they'll go out there and correct that this week, you know, because just from how well they looked from this past Sunday to the last Sunday, I think, you know, Dan's got a good positive staff and, you know, they're going to heap on the positive, which is what they should do. They should heap on the positive. You know, of course you got to coach the negative, but, you know, on Monday, you know, when I used to coach, they used to, we used to call Mondays, tell the truth Monday. We're going to tell you the truth of what happened. You know, the truth is we had a lot of positive things, but we had some negative stuff that caused us to not close that game out. We got to finish, and that should be the mantra. We got to finish. All right. Well, we got some people in the chat right now who pretty much saying that, you know, they don't know about this schedule. And um, I got a one person saying all two teams are on two for a reason. I get playing hard, but this ain't the uh, year for this stuff. You know, a lot of it's a lot of fans in here, man. We've been going seven and nine the past couple of years, and just a lot of a lot of people right now they want to change, man, a change of tone in Flower Branch. Uh, right, so I'm not, I'm not so gonna lie. I'm let, me, let me go ahead, go ahead. Let me, let, me, let me give you this before this: we are in the middle of a season. You do not want a whole bunch of changes happening right now. Let's let's not let's, right. Like so, so basically, if somebody says I want a whole bunch of changes right now, that means you want to get embarrassed the rest of the season. You want to lose. I don't want to see that happen. Right. I want to I want to focus on the fact that if we get things together, there's a chance to really go out here and win. And I only say a chance because you are playing against grown folk. I like let's let me you know, again. Now I got I got to let me, let me, I got to loosen up a little bit here because I'm I'm gonna just keep it honest. New Orleans Saints a good damn team. They are good. Tampa Bay Bucks gonna be real. Panthers you saw they got a good team too. Teddy Bridgewater. So the fact we're playing in the NFL, these teams are good teams. Keenan is going to play against a guy that's a baller across from him who wants to whoop him. We These are all good teams, right? We are not going to give up because there's 0-2. You want a team that doesn't, a team that, that fights and figures out a way to make adjustments. What I'm going to say is when you look at this team, you got pieces that can win. They were whooping on Dallas, just didn't finish it off. So we got the pieces need to make the adjustments. And if you think that the team is just so good that it's just going to win, that's just not how the NFL works. You're going to have even teams that make uh, do enough. They make plays and do enough to be able to win. And so I want to say, you know, again, if, if you want changes, you want them after the season, if they're big changes. During the season, you want small changes. Small changes that they're going to take the team that we have and make that team better. Right. I can agree with you on that. If if we get better, man, that's I'm all for it. You know, if we can get in the playoffs, but if we don't make the playoffs, man. I hey, you can't keep a man like you can't keep a man around like that. And you know, I don't believe it takes. By the way, I, I hate I hate that. You just trying to lose to get a draft pick. Draft hmm. is a crowd shoot. You know. You can, yeah, we ain't worried about that. Exactly. That's 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 in April. We ain't, we ain't worried about that. Well, I'm right. saying, you know, that some people just, they believe in that. They believe, in, oh, we should just tank for this player because that's the next hot commodity out there we can get on the team. I don't believe in that mess, man. Yeah, after two games, come on now, y'all. You can't you can't give up that fast. I mean, it's, it's what I mean. Spot. I mean, how, how, many, how many teams go 2-0 and blazing and everybody like, oh, man, they going to the Super Bowl. God dang it. Look at, and then look, after look at the a while. Look at the 2003 Buffalo Bills. They went oh, they went 2 and 0. Oh, and look, they missed the playoffs that year. Happens a lot, right? Hey, and here's another thing. They they're making adjustments over there. They're trying to they're still trying to figure out what flavor gumbo they want to go out there and play with. Like one little small tweak I noticed out there today defensively, instead of playing a traditional nose, they put that nose in a 2 eye today. I don't know if you noticed that draft. And you know what a 2 eye does? It makes him draw more of them double teams. So now, guess who's free? Our three technique over there. You know what I'm saying? And for a while, that first half, it worked. But, you know, like you said, 
other teams, they scheme and they correct and make adjustments. And, you know, um, I think they'll stick with that a little bit more. You know, they came out in some of that bare front, which gets you some double teams across the board, but it kind of leaves it a little open back there, you know. Uh, they just got to keep mixing it up, see what they flavor is, and I think they'll get it together, honestly. Yeah. yeah I just – you know, I, know, I, know I, I know you're feeling it, brother. Hey, I, I'm just, I'm just, I got to give you my, I, I know you're feeling it. I know it, I know it's hard. And that's so all the fans out there, I know, I know you're, you're feeling this thing, but what I, what I want you to get is who thought the Denver Nuggets would come back from three, three, one down mm. two times. All right. Just keep believing, right. Keep believe that it, it can change. I mean, they're, they're, that's what we're going to do. We want to believe that it can. I mean, you're, you're asking, will Dan Quinn be gone or he'll stay? Well, when the season's over, depending on how it works itself out, he will either prove that he they did enough as a team for him to stay or he will be gone, right? You won't have to worry about that. <laughs> It'll be either enough or it's not enough, right? And ideally, if you're a Falcons fan, you want it to be enough. That's going to be a new slogan, man. Enough. Is it enough or it's not enough? <laughs> all right well we done talk about the game let's talk about some positive all right uh yeah. chris draft your family foundation oh you got something to say uh rick flex oh uh, no i'm just saying hey, let's let's talk about something positive man yes uh, chris <laughs> yes. Draft family foundation uh and team draft man tell everybody what's what's, what's that about I, I already did my research on it and i think it's a great thing man because you know I, yeah. I lost a lot of family members in, uh with cancer man yeah, so you know, appreciate you being, you know, allowing me to, to share uh, the work that we're doing. Uh, so my my wife Keisha was diagnosed with lung cancer. My, you know, that my last year in the NFL. Uh, so I was with the Redskins in the off season and training camp, and then end up being released. So it was my 13th year. I'm at home, and I'm my, you know, Keisha was my girlfriend at the time. She's challenging me to do P90X and run a 10K race with her, and you know, trying to give it to me a little bit, <laughs> and. I mean, that's the, I'm, I'm saying that because that's the type of shape that she was in. It's just an amazing shape, 37 years old. And then all of a sudden, in December of 2010, she had a little shortness of breath and went into a primary care doc and uh, she got a ch- chest X-ray and they found a mass in her lung. You know, after getting a PET scan, which find, you know, the, that kind of determines if it's if it's spread or metastasized. Uh, we found out she had stage four lung cancer. And, you know, the crazy thing about it was we we, we found the mo- out the most important fact is that anyone can get lung cancer. But we found it out with uh, with her. And that's 37 years old, amazing shape. And and that unfortunately, not only that anyone can get it, but that it's it's fierce, man. It's uh, it's crazy. So she ended up passing a, a year later, uh, December of um, 2011. But before she passed, we were able to get married in November uh, where she made a, a commitment, you know, at our wedding, she asked me, "What if we don't get presents? What if we ask our family and friends to support our team draft initiative that will fight against lung cancer?" And so uh, I tell people, there's these amazing points, you know, with my wife that you know that it's important for people to really get, and that is when you get diagnosed with stage four cancer, that is just terrible. You have to make a choice to fight to live. All right. And that's where you you hear me in terms of even some of my perspective in terms of football is Keisha had a choice. You either fight to live or you just accept death. And she chose to fight, even though it was a terrible situation. She chose to fight and she chose to be able to see the joy in each day, find the joy in each day and be able to appreciate that even though that she was going through this this uh, thing called lung cancer, that it was still a blessing each day. And then when we got to our wedding, she she made this amazing choice to say, I'm ready to fight for others where we can expand our that, you know, I can fight for me. We can fight for me, but we can also fight for others. And, you know, these these tremendous choices that she made is really what is the foundation for team draft. And that is that we've consistently went and looked for our survivors, survivors that want to stand up and make that similar commitment as Keisha to say that, hey, I want to fight for other people. And then. When they stand up, we're challenging our cancer centers and our organizations to make sure they make it clear that research matters. Because unfortunately, historically, all they've said is just get people to stop smoking, that they've said only that, which is just prevention, right? And what we know is, you know, COVID has made it that much clearer that prevention is not enough. You know, social distancing is not enough to just get people back. Like, you have to do more than that. 
And so lung cancer is the same way. We need research if we want to change, you know, change the face of lung cancer and save more lives. And I've been able to witness that over these, you know, these basically almost 10 years now, which is crazy, that research doesn't just matter. It absolutely matters, but it research works. And that's why, you know, if you look at our site and you see some of these people, they, they look good because the, the newer drugs are making it where they can live longer and then have a better quality of life. And, and you know, I tell them, I say, it's, 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 not, it's not hard, you know, to understand why, you know, what we're fighting for. We're fighting for people. We're fighting for them to live, and we're fighting for them to live with higher quality and, and be able to appreciate that. And that's exactly what my wife did. So that's the commitment of Team Draft and changing the face of lung cancer, you know, taking it to the street and recognizing that every day we have a chance to get better. Every day we have a chance to save somebody's life. And that's what we have to commit to it. Just like with ball, it is every day go get it. And this, it's cancer, it's lives. We got to have that same same perspective. Thank you for everything that you're doing in the community, man. You know, because, like, it, it, it takes a lot, man, for somebody to step up to the plate and just do what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. And, like, man, let me be honest with you, man. You know, like we said, man, we, you know, you and Kenny, y'all was like, we looked up to you guys when we was little, man, when we played the game and stuff, you know, middle school or whatever. But we didn't know nothing, man. Do you share this with me right now, man? Like, I didn't know. I didn't know all this, you know? That you was married and then you lost your wife, you know, with cancer. Like, we didn't know all this. Like, man. Oh, and, that, and, and that's that's why what I'm telling you guys. I mean, I you know, I, I can use that as an example when we're talking about COVID. I can I tell you that that, that that bad stuff could just happen out of nowhere and, and all the plans that you had can just go just where's the where's the trash can? Let me throw it in the trash and burn that sucker sucker up. I mean, that's why it, it's so real. Like like we you know, football challenged me, and like I say, this cliche of, you know, take everything out of each day and fight for it. Uh, but then being right there with my wife, and all it was was just another validator that says that you can't say that enough. You can't say it enough that you got to take advantage of every day and, and make sure that, that you don't just go for it and, and, and get your work in, but make sure the people in your life that you care about, that you let them know. Right. That you really let them know that you care. And I think, again, a lot of that stuff with, with COVID happening right now, there's a lot of people that are able to spend time with each other and they're and they're remembering like, you know, I need to let them know. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. You know. Mm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah. All the Falcons Nation is pissed off. We need to just be grateful for watching right now. You know, you're definitely right. It's things bigger than the football, man. That's the thing. We tell people this all the time. Life is bigger, you know, family yep. and, you know, your health. That's that's more important than just being a fan of a team, yep. you know. So, yeah, I just – life is, you know, like I said, life is short. You got to love why you still can, man. You got to love why you still can, man. Boy, that is – everything that has been happening pandemic-wise – and in our world, it's just, it, you know, it's it really kind of woke me up months ago to where I was like, you know, we've changed some things that we do with our kids, you know, because sometimes you get so used to the hustle and bustle of life, got to do this, got to do that, that you don't spend no time with, 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 with the people you love or you tell them that you love them or you tell them reasons why you love them and appreciate them, you know. Um, you know, I'm so blessed that we've been able to take this time and, you know, sit around with our kids and try and actually eat dinner with them or you know at night we all say prayers and hey what are you thankful for what are you thankful for what are you thankful for you know yeah. or on birthdays hey everybody go around the table hey tell one thing why do you what what do you love the most about this person you know what do you appreciate the most about this person it's man you you, you got to love why you still can cuz you never yeah. know you never know when when you never know when that clock gonna go. You know what it I'm is. saying, it man. Is. Exactly. Well, we appreciate y'all coming on, man. Uh, one more thing, but Travis he said uh, he he said if you you still know Keon Carpenter, tell him tell him what's up, man. Ke Keon actually passed away. Yeah. 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 Keon passed away. Oh yeah, I remember that. Yeah, back in yeah. 2010. Yeah, so no, actually, actually a couple of years ago he passed away. Yeah, dang. 
So if he, if he wants to say what's up, just just look up, look up and uh, say what's up. Right? Oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. God bless the Carpenter family. Hey, y'all be on the lookout. His son Kyle is a baller at Buford, so he's he's ro- he's rolling around rocking the two nine. So you know he's a uh, he's a uh, he's carrying he's carrying his father's uh legacy on because y'all know Keon was uh was very big in the community in Baltimore you know very loved very well like did a lot for that community um you know God bless Keon man and yes. you know God bless his family you know they you know we we still have much contact with them you know so uh yeah man God bless them carpenters hey can I can I tell a quick story real fast on Chris Tell Draft. Us. I know I know this is Chris Draft's interview, but I had to come on here. It's so, all in. Yeah, well, I am I'm I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell so all them tell them how you are. You know what I'm saying? There was Chris, do you remember that time where I think it was after the old four season and they signed somebody else back? Should have signed you back because you were, I think, team leader in tackles, or if not, you were two behind Brooklyn or whatever. I don't know what it was, but you know, you were the brains of that defensive front, and they didn't sign you back. And you signed with Carolina that offseason. And when you signed, I knew I was like, man, draft is gonna try and peel our cat back. <laughs> I knew that from the whole offseason. And so Usually, most of the time, when you see Draft on the field, he's all, hey, smiling and all that. We went to Carolina Bank of America Stadium, and Draft wasn't doing none of that smiling, <laughs> freezy going, carefree spirit that y'all hear and see on this uh, camera right now. Like, because I saw him, I knew what it was, I knew how he felt about it. And then when I saw him, I was just kind of checking, testing the water, checking the temperature. I was like, hey, what's up, Draft? And he just kind of looked at me. And went back about his bend. I said, oh, shit. <laughs> and, Chris, how many tackles did you end up with on that day, man? That must have been uh, the was... best game I ever saw you play. Oh, yeah, so it was a couple, couple of tackles for loss, uh, sack, and then, you know, yeah. But, but you know, Keenan, like, the only way that you can respond, like, somebody says, hey, we're going to give, you know, this person, we're going to pay him a whole bunch of money to take your spot. And I can say, I don't like it, or that's bull. But the really only way that I could respond was to play in the game. Like that was right. the only that's the only way that you can really like there's nothing that I can say, nothing that I can really kind of do other than when we play against each other, say, all right, with my actions, you made a, a poor decision. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, and again, that's the, that's the only way you can get it done. So I, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, it just, it worked out. Uh, and, you know, absolutely with so many people down in Atlanta with you guys. And, and I, I would say that, you know, when you play against your brothers, uh, I, you know, I have a brother growing up and you, you play against your brother, it, it, it's that much more real too. Like you, you know, those, there's those teams that you hate, those, those other teams. And then when you're playing against your brother, you, you just, you just can't. You just can't let them get you. <laughs> no, man. Hey, I remember we was all in the huddle, and I remember McClure looked at me one time. He's like, God dang, man, draft is on fire today. <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, y'all knew he was going to come with it today, man, after that BS that happened this offseason. But I- I'll say this. You know, as good as you were playing and you was on that other side of the ball, I was happy to see you. You know what I'm saying? You know, get get your redemption that way. You know what I'm saying? Kind of show them, hey, look here, yo, y'all should have y'all should have stuck with your boy over here. You know, I was I was yeah. happy for you. You know, yeah, I I appreciate that, man. Like I said, that you know, when you see me, uh, you know, I it, 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 it's hard because it's like these are my guys, you know, and that's you know, it, it, and that's when you when you leave it, you know, those are your guys. But that's why I say you have to make sure you get as much as you can every day. Go after it because again, it's. The other people are making decisions and you could just end up being gone. So at least I I was I was happy about the fact that I got to play with my guys and 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 then but I had to send a message that says, man, you know you didn't took me away from my guys. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you, you took these are my that's my family. You didn't took me away from it. So I gotta send I gotta send a message back. Yeah. Right. And, Cause you played well. It wasn't like you was on the downstairs. You were playing well and 
you know, all of a sudden a decision was made, man. So you're absolutely right, man. You gotta, uh, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta play well with the time that you're given. You know what I'm saying? Because you never know what's gonna be on. Hey, on another note, you guys, I gotta say thank you to Drab because a lot of y'all don't know this, but you know, I met my wife through Chris. You know, they went to high school together, so you know, me and my wife just celebrated. Our 16th, I hope I get that right and I don't get cocked upside the head. We just celebrated our 16th wedding anniversary, you know, five kids, yeah, <laughs> the running man, right? And uh, yeah, you know, my, you know, that's my, that's my, that's, that's my light skin uh, queen right there. Oh, yeah. That's good. Wow. Yeah, man. Hey, y'all don't understand. This is my brother. Since I first came into the locker room in Atlanta, he was one of them vets. You know, they always say, when you get to your locker room, find you a vet that ain't talking it, but they walking it, you know, watch what they do, you know, because a lot of people, they'll talk you to death. Yeah. But then you watch what they do and you're like, man, what you talking about ain't lining up with what you're doing. Exactly. Chris is one of those guys, you know, he always took care, extra care of his body. He always studied. He always worked out. He always did the whole workout. Cause there's some guys that'll get into the weight room and like, man, I ain't finna do that shit today. No, nah, Chris doing the whole workout, you know. So he was one of those guys that I always looked up to and was like, you know what, he's doing it the right way. And 13 years later in the NFL, boom, boy, you a success, man. Congratulations, dog. That's, 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 that's my guy right there. That's name about. That's my guy. That's thing about Chris. Like I knew back then, you know, student of the game, very great player. You just didn't, you know, a lot of people didn't respect Chris because he wasn't flash, but you was all substance. That's the thing. You knew before they even snapped the ball, you knew where you needed to go, where the play was going to be. Like, even as a what? Hold on. Like, in middle school, preteen, you know, I knew, wow, this man, know, he, he knows the, he knows what the damn, we know what's going on in the game. You know? So, like I said, man, I, I admired you since then, man. So. Oh man, Chris was a computer out there, man. Let me tell you another story. <laughs> hey, hey, Chris, I was uh, you 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 remember uh, Slick T, Terrence Melton? Me yeah. and him was talking over at Kevin Schaefer's Chop Block restaurant down in Gainesville. Hey, all the viewers, y'all should go check out Chop Block in Gainesville. It's a real nice spot. They got some good food there. Hey, it's run me, by Kevin hey, Schaefer. Hit me, hey, hit me the link in the uh, in the DM, man. Tell me the name of that restaurant. I, I would drive up there. Chop block, like a chop block. Hey, you guys set him up and you're going to chop block and cut him off at the knees. That's the name of it because that's what we was good at, right? No, I'm just I'm just joking. We ain't chop block nobody, y'all. But anyways, <laughs> I was talking with Slick one time and Slick was talking about, man, goddamn draft was a computer in there because we sit up and have a linebacker coach coming in there. And most of the time, them coaches didn't know more <laughs> about X's and O's than draft did. And so the coach just be up there trying to teach everybody what we working on and doing today and drive, get to asking all the questions. Well, coach, what if the back, you know, flares out? Or what if that number two receiver does this and that? And the coach will like, well, don't worry about that. That ain't going to happen. Well, coach, what if it does? Don't. The coach could keep up with drive mine because drive trying to know everything. So that just lets you know how much of a how much of a quarterback on defense he was for us. You know, he got everybody lined up. He knew what was going to happen before it happened. And a lot of times the linebacker coach or the D coordinator, they was having to ask him, hey, what you think we should do on this? <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that, Kate. I mean, that's uh, I know we, we're about to get off here. So I, I, I just want to share you guys a, a story and why just even that special teams uh, play today was so important. Is I, I actually got when I was with the Rams, a, a special teams player of the game. Uh, I had. Two tackles on special teams, but I actually really got it for recognizing how, based on the setup of, of the kicker, like where he put the ball on the field, be it right in the middle or on the hash, it determined how far the ball was going to land. Wow. And so it was important that we adjusted who we were blocking up front because if on one side, it would be shorter. Other side, it would be further away. And so we end up winning a game because of making an adjustment of mm. blocking the right people. And so that's what, you know, that's what I was, you know, was about. And that's where, again, when, when we're talking about the adjustments right now, it's are we seeing the little details? Are we, you know, are, 
are you willing to ask the question? That's all I was trying to do. Is I was always trying to ask the question that's that that next thing that so that we get in the game and we're not surprised. Mm. Because what did you see is by being surprised, that's the difference between winning a game. Mm. Right? Mm. And that one game could be the difference between going to playoffs. That one game could be the difference between having a job. Mm. <laughs> right? Uh, yeah. So they would say, oh, Chris, what do you think? Like, I mean, it's that serious. Yeah. Yep. Mm hmm. All right. All right. Well, hey, that's good. Man. That's good, baby. That's good. Man, we, it was a great show, man. We didn't. Yeah, I ain't even looking at the time, man. I'm just sitting here, just, you know, letting y'all, you know, talk about old, you know, old, you know, reminiscing back in the day and everything, getting y'all insight on, you know, what the team should be, do. Hey, man, we love it, man. And I'm pretty sure everybody who joined us, because we had at one point, man, 40 people watching right now. Currently, yes, and then we're going to have yes. over like, we're going to have over probably like 200, 300 views before hey. Wednesday. So I hey. can see that. Hey, real quick, though. Yeah, for real. Thank y'all. Scrap football, man. Y'all done got me a, a new mindset and waking up tomorrow and what I'm going to do to attack my game plan for my life. So that's what I'm taking away for this. So I do appreciate, you know, everything you guys said and take it to heart and run with it. So thank y'all. And I'm going to put this out again. And a lot of Falcons fans, upset Falcons fans, y'all need to go ahead and just rewind all the way to the, to the beginning of the show. And, you know, by tomorrow you won't be overreaching. Saying dumb stuff on social media, you know, because these guys, you know, hey, they're making us breathe again, you know. So, man, we yeah. appreciate Mike, that. Mike, Mike, Mike Vick's not coming back, y'all. I love Mike, man, but Matt is our quarterback, man. Let's get behind him. Yeah, I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I ain't even talk about Mike Vick, man. That'd be a whole nother, what, 30 minutes. <laughs> man, hey, I see on Twitter everybody talking about Mike coming back. I'm like, man, y'all, Mike been retired several years. Mike ain't trying to come back, man. My Matt is our quarterback, man. You know, he's an MVP. Let's get behind him. Yeah, he's a captain for a reason. Yes, sir. Exactly. He's a future Hall of Famer. Will people like it or not, he will be wearing that gold jacket one day. Yes, sir. He just passed up John Elway last week. Yeah, he's going to have that gold jacket. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, once again, thank y'all for coming on. Chris, uh, let everybody know uh, where they can find you and where they can, uh, you know, find the Chris Draft Family Foundation and Team Draft. Well, they can go to Chris Draft Family Foundation dot org. That's uh, and Team Draft dot org, and then they can follow me on uh, at at Chris Draft on Twitter, Chris dot Draft on Instagram, and you know, just give me a shout. All right, and King, appreciate you coming back on again, man. Appreciate it, appreciate it as always, man. Thank y'all so much. No problem. Hey, y'all. Oh, can I can I can I give a shout from my Twitter and my Instagram? Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I'm a, sure. you know I'm a Keenan Forney on Twitter. Uh, F and F65 performance on Instagram, you know, I, I post a lot of positive, uh, a lot of positive material. And also, too, um, you know, I train young high school, college, NFL linemen. I just had the number four overall pick this past draft, Andrew Thomas out of Georgia um, and a bunch of other guys. But uh, I've been doing this thing for about three, four years, man. And I've been putting out some really good competitive uh well, not competitive, but I've been putting out some winners. Some kids going to Division One, living out their dreams. Guys going to uh, the NFL. You know, it's a uh, it's a blessing to be relevant and to be able to still give back and teach this game. So, if you want some teaching, man, come holler at your boy, man. I'm on there. I ain't Hollywood. You know, I'll get right back with you. I got a kid. <laughs> I, have a, I have a kid who just committed to Georgia Tech. His name is Weston Franklin. I'm gonna try to reach okay. out to him because I taught him um, a few years ago. Um, I'm gonna reach out to him and um, get you, you plug him your um, your account, and hopefully he'll he'll come talk to you because hey, like I said, man, you just pull out the fourth overall the fourth overall pick, um, that that speaks volumes right there, man. Yeah, man, you know, and uh, they you know those kids they still hit me up to ask me how do they play, what should they work on, you know, uh, still want me to help them develop their game through the season, so. You know, that just speaks volumes to them. And I'm just thank God that he's uh, blessed me with this opportunity, man. And, you know, I'd love to help any other kid, up and coming kid, because, you know, this game's done a lot for me, man. And I want to give back and pay it forward. All right. Appreciate sure. it. Well, hey, if you're new to the channel, y'all know what to do. 
Hit that subscribe button. Also, hit that like button. Share this content out with other Atlanta sports fanatics. If you're watching this at a later uh, time, hit us up in the comment section. Tell, tell us how you feel about the show. Tell us, you know, comment about, you know, the state of the Falcons or comment about, you know, the, the times that you remember Chris Draft and Keenan Forney when they played. All right. Hey, as always, come hollow at your hometown sports podcast. We will be back tomorrow for a special edition of Fela Sports Podcast. Uh, Ricky, he put out a, a clip earlier today, so y'all look at that as well. Once again, appreciate y'all coming on, man. All right. All right Peace. You know, we out. Y'all have a great evening. Y'all have a great week. Y'all. Yeah, okay.